So I received an intriguing flow rate calculation question from one of our viewers. And the way the question is framed, it really highlights several important elements when it comes to understanding flow rate calculations. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve this question and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa. And if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So if you need a more thorough review on flow rates calculations or you'd like to see additional examples, then be sure to check out the other videos. I'll put links in the description and the card to show up pretty shortly. But let's get right to it. This question says, a hospital pharmacy receives a medication order for 500 mg aminophilin in 250 ml normal saline solution for a 132 pound patient. The aminophilin is to be administered at a dose of 300 microgram per kilogram per hour using an IV set that delivers 60 drops per milliliter. The pharmacy has 20 milliliter vials of injection containing aminophilin 25 mg per milliliter. Calculate the following. A. The milliliters of aminophilin injection that should be added to the normal saline solution. B. The total volume of the intravenous infusion. C. The milligrams of aminophilin administered per hour. D. The duration in hours for complete infusion. E. The number of milliliters of infusion delivered per hour. So that would be the flow rate milliliters per hour. And then F the number of drops administered per minute and that will be flow rate in drops per minute. Now the question is fairly long so to make the solution easy to follow I'm going to first solve A through C and then I'll solve D through F. So before we start answering the question let's quickly summarize all the important information that we've been given in the question. The first thing we've been given is the amount of drug that the patient is going to receive and that's the 500 milligrams of aminophilin. We've also been given the volume of the bag in which we'll be putting the drug which is the 250 milliliters of normal saline. We also have the weight of the patient which is 132 pounds and then we have what is known as the normalized mass rate which is the 300 micrograms per kilogram per hour. We've also been given the calibration or drop factor which is the 60 drops per milliliter and then we have the volume of the vial of injection containing aminophilin which is the 20 milliliters and then the concentration of the aminophilin in the vial is 25 milligrams per milliliter. So now let's go ahead and solve part A of the question and the question actually says calculate the milliliters of aminophilin injection that should be added to the normal saline solution. So for part A, what we actually need is the concentration of the aminophilin in the vial of injection, which is the 25 milligrams per milliliter. And then we also need the amount of drug, amount of aminophilin that you are going to give the patient. And so the way that breaks down is we'll take the 25 milligrams per milliliter which implies that you have 25 milligrams of aminophilin in every milliliter of solution. And that should be equal to the amount of drug that we want to give the patient, which is the 500 milligrams of aminophilin. But we do not know what the volume will be. So that will be XML. So we can go ahead and solve for X, which is the unknown here. X equals 500 milligrams times 1 milliliter divided by 25 milligrams and that is equal to 20 milliliters. So you need to take 20 milliliters of solution from the vials of injection containing aminophilin and that is what will supply the 500 milligrams. So from the question, it basically means that you take one whole vial of injection containing aminophilin and then you would 
transfer that using an injection into the 250 milliliter normal saline solution. So for B, the total volume is going to be equal to the volume of the normal saline bag plus the volume of drag added. So that would imply that the volume of the normal saline bag is going to be the 250 milliliters and to that we need to add the volume of the drug added which would be the 20 milliliters that we just calculated in part a so 250 plus 20 that gives us 270 milliliters so for c we are actually looking for the mass rate and the way we do that is we take the normalized mass rate which is the 300 microgram per kilogram hour and we multiply that by the weight of the patient because it's normalized to body weight so that'll be 132 pounds but the units are not consistent you have pounds in the numerator you have kilograms in the denominator so we need to change the pounds to kilograms and so we will say 2.2 pounds is equivalent to one kilogram so now the kilograms cancel out and the pounds cancel out so now you're left in micrograms per hour but the question is looking for milligrams per hour so we need to convert the milligrams and so we make use of the conversion factor that the thousand micrograms is equivalent to one milligram the micrograms cancel out and now you are in milligrams per hour. Now, since we are using dimensional analysis, we can go ahead and multiply everything in the numerator, which would be the 300 times the 132 times one times one milligram and divide that by everything in the denominator, which would be the hours times 2.2 times 1000 and this should be equal to 18 milligrams per hour. So the next step will be to solve part D of the question. And the question says calculate the duration in hours for complete infusion. And so for D, we are actually interested in the duration in hours, which is basically the time. And so that is going to be given by the amount of drag divided by the mass rate that we just calculated. And so that's going to be equal to 500 milligrams, which is the amount of drag divided by 18 milligrams per hour which is the mass rate which we calculated in part c of the question so if you go ahead and do the math this should give us 27.78 which is approximately 27.8 hours the next thing we can do is solve part e of the question and the question says calculate the number of milliliters of infusion delivered per hour basically flow rate in milliliters per hour so for part e which is the flow rate in milliliters per hour that's going to be equal to the volume divided by the time and so that's going to be equal to the total volume which we calculated in part B 
and we found that to be 270 milliliters and then we divide that by the time which we just calculated to be 27.8 hours and so that gives us 9.71 milliliters per hour so we can now solve part f of the question and that actually says calculate the number of drops administered per minute so we are looking for flow rates but this time flow rate in drops per minute so for f we are also looking for flow rate but this time the flow rate is in drops per minute and so we go ahead and we take the flow rate in milliliters per hour which we calculated from part e so that would be the 9.71 milliliters per hour and we convert that to drops per minute so in one hour you have 60 minutes and so the hour cancels out we are now in milliliters per minute and then we can make use of the drop factor which says you have 60 drops in one milliliter so the milliliter cancels out and you are now in drops per minute now because you have 60 the denominator and 16 the numerator you actually end up with the same numeric value which is 9.71 but the units are going to be in drops per minute so i hope you found this video tutorial useful if you need more practice check out our other videos be sure to like them and share them if you have any questions leave them in the comments and i'll get to them as soon as i see them if you like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations tips tricks and strategies then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.